Final Frontier Design in Brooklyn is building spacesuits and components for the next generation of astronaut. And they're trying to do it at a lower cost than NASA while on a shoestring budget. It's just been a challenge being a very small business in the world of large contractors where um, you know, just filling out the spreadsheet. It's like, who is your PR rep? Who is your accountant? Who is your head of maintenance? Who, you know, it's all me. <laughs> the spacesuit market is still a pretty small part of the aerospace industry, but being a startup in that world means going up against companies that have made history. So in the United States, there's only two other companies that make spacesuits, and that's ILC Dover. They built the suits for Apollo. Uh, David Clark uh, is very well known for the headsets they make for the military, but have been around since the 40s building safety garments for the Air Force and NASA. These companies are all competing for contracts to build two different kinds of spacesuit. An intravehicular activity suit, or IVA, which is a soft suit worn inside a spacecraft that's pressurized for launch and re-entry and an extravehicular suit, or EVA, which is a more rugged suit meant to withstand the harshness of a spacewalk or exploring a planet. We currently market an IVA suit uh, for flight in the neighborhood of $125,000 to $150,000. For an EVA suit, our projections, we think we can come in less than $2 million per unit. Compare that to the nearly $200 million that NASA has spent since 2007 on developing several suits and technologies, which a 2017 Inspector General audit says are not fully flight ready. But NASA did spend about $12 million on flight suits that astronauts will wear on Orion Deep Space missions in the 2020s, which are currently in testing. A NASA spokesperson also told CNBC its current supply of EVA spacesuits and parts are enough for operating on the International Space Station through at least 2024. Beyond that, the agency will review the needs of future missions to the ISS and further exploration. During the space race, it was the United States government and the former Soviet Union fighting for dominance in human space travel and exploration. But fast forward a few decades, and it's billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk competing in the next space race that's leading to a new crop of startups looking to do business alongside corporate giants in the new era of commercial space travel. 2009 um, was, a, was a key milestone for entrepreneurial efforts in space. There was really a couple of dozen privately funded space companies back then, and you see these barriers to entry come crashing down, and in comes a wave of entrepreneurship and innovation, and now that number has grown to 300 plus privately funded space companies, 15 billion invested into those companies. That's what we refer to as the dawn of the entrepreneurial space age. Space startup funding is creeping higher as NASA's portion of the federal budget shrinks. It's $20.7 billion made up about half a percent of the total for the 2018 fiscal year. And in just the first quarter of 2018, investors had already put nearly $1 billion into commercial space companies and are on track to spend $4 billion by the end of the year. However, Final Frontier has operated since 2010 without outside investments. It relies on money from government contracts for components like gloves alongside work for other private customers. So we sold two spacesuits for $10,000 on Kickstarter, and we could not make them for that cheap. It, was, uh, it didn't cover materials, let alone labor. Um, on the other hand, we built several suits, and that's like, that was the goal of our company all along has been to leverage as much as we can to take the next step and stay alive and advance to the point that when the industry finally decides they need these, which I think they will, uh, we'll be ready to provide them. SpaceX and Boeing have been racing to get a crew in orbit, which may happen by the end of 2018. Both have revealed designs for passengers staying inside the capsules. Travelers on Starliner will wear suits by industry titan David Clark. But SpaceX developed its own suit for Dragon, a prototype of which Elon Musk sent into space with Starman aboard his personal Tesla Roadster in February 2018. Man, it took us three years to design that, sp that, that spacesuit. It was real hard. And even though Final Frontier hasn't made the cut for these opportunities yet, they're still aiming to break into the larger market of making suits that allow astronauts to brave the elements of space. Really where we see a business opportunity in the mid-term mid is um, supplying EVA spacesuits to a whole host of companies that want to send people to orbit. EVA is mandatory for orbital human space flight and certainly planetary human space flight. You're not going to land on a planet and stay inside. 
but there's just in, there's no option right now really there's like there's no commercial EVA spacesuit it doesn't exist